everyone and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem. We've been having lots of fun times with painting recently and I've started to have a little bit of pencil withdrawal and I kind of knew this was going to happen and today I wanted to do another study. Now jokingly someone left a comment on the Facebook page when I had posted up the picture of the clownfish which we did in a study uh, way back last year and uh, the, the comment was where's Dory? Obviously people associate clownfish with Finding Nemo and today uh, we're going to find Dory so I thought it would be really nice to jump into our sketchbooks and do another fish study this time looking at a Dory fish which um, there turns out there's lots of names for but they're most commonly known as blue tangs so I'm going to walk you through the process because it's a fish that's unfamiliar to me I don't draw fish very often so maybe we can learn together or maybe you just want to find a method for starting a study for yourself or maybe you just want to try something different. We're all here for the same thing. So when I want to practice something that is unfamiliar to me, the first thing that I like to do is go on to Google and find lots and lots of different pictures of the subject, preferably at different sizes, at different angles as well. And it's really to learn about the characteristics, what makes that species the way that it is. And also so that we've got different dimensions and we learn in a 3D format, not just putting something flat on the paper. I like to print them off on to paper, but some people just like to work from their phones or whatever. You can make a little collage. Uh, there's plenty of apps that let you do that. So you can see here, I've got lots of different pictures from, from different angles. And uh, this one's particularly helpful as well. And really what I'm doing is I'm using these as a point of reference. I'm not going to copy any one specific picture. The other thing I find really helpful is to learn a little bit about the animal as well and you can get lots of nice descriptions on some of the conservation websites in particular are really good and it's just to help build a better understanding of a said creature. So we're going to pick some pages in the sketchbook. This sketchbook is coming ever closer to the end. We're nearly there. I'm still excited for my new sketchbook and I am going to make a video when the time comes to start a new sketchbook but that's for another day. So I like to have two pages together here and I do have kind of a format for this now and if you haven't watched the clownfish study I'll link it down in the description but also at the end card. I am going to follow the same format and that's just the way that I like to do things because I find it's the best way for me to learn. So I've got all my pictures here, I've got a nice fresh page and I'm just going to grab my eraser because we're definitely going to need that and my never ending disposable mechanical pencil. I've had this for absolutely ages, it's just a cheap one. Uh, there, there is no lead in there, what, what is there is what is in the tip so I don't know how long this is going to last but it's just been going forever. So generally the, the kind of thing that I do is I always start on the right hand page and it's just because I'm left handed so all my rough sketches actually go on this page and what I like to do is try and draw the animal from basic shapes and then refine them down and then try at different angles and I'll pick maybe one or two that I like and then over on this page I'll try and create a slightly more finished piece and even if it's just one little fish but we pick out some colours in coloured pencil really explore those colours and the dimension and how to make them look you know really bring them to life and make them 3D so at least we can end up with one finished image by the end of our quick study here today. So it doesn't really matter what we're drawing we still stick to the same principles when we're doing this. So when I looked up these images I found out that the, the main names that a dory fish is called is a blue tang. Now there's quite a few variations but they're sometimes also known as blue surgeon fish as well which I think is the less common name for them. So I'm going to be looking at, uh, at an adult, a full grown fish here because one of the first things I learned about them is that when they're babies they're all yellow which I thought was amazing. I did try and find a picture of a baby one but uh, unfortunately the ones that I came across were they were all deceased which I thought was a bit grim. I thought I'll skip that step. So I'm going to take a side on view first just because it's easy to see the anatomy and the placement of the fins and the tails and that's something that I learned from last time that you know the, the fundamental parts are the shape of the body because fish are more or less all body um, and then tails and fins are kind of well, that's you know, their main characteristics really, isn't it? That, funnily enough, with the clownfish as well, they're, they're not a really uniform shape, I suppose it'd be like any other animal really. But we want to break them down into basic shapes. And we have this sort of nose or face section, which is roughly triangular. 
And then we have this body section and some of them seem to be longer and slimmer and then you get kind of like shorter, stubbier, fat ones. Now I don't know whether to do it's to do with the position that they're in when they're swimming. You know, maybe they like expand and contract a wee bit as they, you know, depending on the way they're moving their tail. I don't know because I haven't seen one in real life. Uh, but I'm going to go for this, this sort of oval shape and it's slightly bigger and rounder than this triangle section, it's larger. But see, we can adjust these as we go along and then their tail is basically a triangle. So I suppose this is sort of an oval with the end cut off of it. And um, we have our triangle at the front, a triangle at the back. And again, the tail, it seems to depend very much on the position that they're swimming in because I have the feeling that this can sort of splay out or if they're kind of scooting along, it maybe streamlines a little bit. And then they have these gorgeous fins and they're again triangular, very triangular, very flat. And these are very important because it's one of the places where you get a pop of colour because the rest of their bodies are blue and these are yellow and they are bright yellow. And then they have the, the fin, so they've got this fin runs all the way down their body, like all the way down to their tail. And again, in some of the pictures, this fin is quite flat and in others it's kind of sitting up a little bit. And then down the bottom, it's the same sort of situation on the bottom here, like this. So nothing crazy here, pretty simple shapes. And that's the basis that we're going to work from. So when we see them from the front, one thing that's quite important when we're drawing fish is you have to know the shape of the body in the three-dimensional sense. So on the side here, you know, they're kind of, kind of oval. But when you see them from the front, that they're, they're a flat fish. So when you see them from the front, you're not actually seeing an awful that They're like this shape. And you know, that, that means that they are, their eyes are like all the way out here. And they've, they've got a little mouth going on somewhere. And uh, if you, you know, if you're lucky, you might see a, you might see you might see a little bit of fin going on, but if you're looking at them absolutely square on, uh, you, you're basically going to see these little side fins, like this, and that's that's going to be about the the size of it. If they're swishing their tail, you may maybe maybe see a little bit of tail out there or something. So uh, not a lot, not a lot going on from the front view. Like it's very very skinny, very flat. So if we want to draw this fish in any other shape, you know, if it's got a slight twist in its body, you know, if you weren't looking square on, maybe slightly to the side, that you're going to have to get yourself from this shape to this shape. And that transition can be quite interesting and also be quite challenging as well, but it makes for a better picture. So that's one of the things that we have to think about and that we're going to look at as well. So let's go back to this first idea here and let's refine down these basic shapes. And you can use this for any type of drawing and it's the way that I recommend. Uh, most people's brains will deal better when you're learning something unfamiliar to you is by, the best way to do it is by breaking it down into these basic shapes and then you can go from there. So the first thing I noticed just from doing this is here I have two triangles that are very similar size and the more I look at these pictures that I've got, these reference pictures, the, the tail section is much, much smaller is it, and it's a much, much smaller shape than the head section. So that's something that we're going to have to refine down. So let's, uh, let's, let's draw this triangle again at the front and we've got this oval. And then let's make this triangle at the back. And uh, we're making it significantly smaller than the one at the front. Now we can bend the rules a wee bit, we can change this and we can, you know, we can make it do, we, we, we can make it look a little bit fancier. Uh, the other thing as well I really like about drawing fish is these front fins, uh, you, depending on what position they're in, you know, because obviously that's their mobility, uh, you can have them at all sorts of really funky angles as well. And these are characterised in the Disney film because they're kind of used as hands to gesticulate. So you can really, you can really do what you want. And I think our clownfish last time, I think we had one that was waving at us, you know. Uh, so that's just something that you can do for a bit of fun. But to start off with, I want to keep this downward position and it's so that we can concentrate on the pattern and the shape and really make it look, uh, you know, really get to know the different markings and everything so we can put those in as well okay so when we come let's start at the front uh, as you might as well start at the front now obviously it's not a really pointy triangle this but at the apex of this triangle this is where the mouth is and they have got the funniest little mouths they've got tiny tiny mouths um, you know how you use, again, sort of, if you're looking at cartoon fish, they've got these big sort of comedy rubber lips. Uh, these, these little guys actually do have lips like that, but they're smaller. So if we make that our starting point, and this is, uh, this triangle, this front part of their face is actually much more curved. So we're going to soften this line into a curve. And it's pretty symmetrical. There's a bit more of a flat part here, and then it comes down and round. 
and the eyes are quite far up and they're quite close to the top part of their head. So again, eye place can, placement can make a big difference and you can use that to your advantage if you want to, uh, you know, if you want to characterise something a wee bit, then you can change that eye placement to, to suit that idea. Kind of the way I was talking about the fins down here, this dorsal fin at the top, when it's fanned up and in its like its biggest shape, I'm just going to define this body line a little bit here. So when this is standing on end, for want of a better phrase, erect, I don't know what the proper terminology is for when a fish has got its fin up, but it, it looks like lots of little sails. So this line across the top here, let's just bring this round so that you can see the part that I'm actually working on. And it does taper away so it gets thinner as we get towards the back of the fish. It's in very clearly marked sections and the, the actual pigment, you know, the markings on the fin really, really highlights that. But see, it's almost like a sail. So they, it's in little dips like this. And every time it dips down, this is like a section and there's a little black line that comes down. You know, almost like a fan. Again, we're not too worried right now about getting all the detail in, but we, we want it to, you know, to look a little bit like it's supposed to look. And they, um, they get less prominent towards the back. To, it almost just kind of looks a bit like a squiggly line. Like, I think I actually want to bring that a bit further forward, but and the good thing about it is, is we can just add sections on. Now, some of them seem to be a wee bit hefty in the tummy area and others are, are slightly more streamlined. Um, like this one here, again, it could be the swimming position, but if I show you this one here, you know, they seem to be a bit more uh, athletic looking. Whereas we take a little, little look at our pal down here, there's a sort of, sort of tom tom, or maybe that's like a, a, a food pouch or something in there. So again, options, different ways of looking at it. And then we have this fin, and it has two very distinct dark sections on either side. And the tail is very much like these fins in that it comes out and it's got these two dark areas. Maybe got a little bit excited with myself there. On <laughs> and then this very soft part in the middle. And again, that's yellow as well. So the one consistent thing I have seen is that this yellow part comes all the way into and it stops in quite a, quite a severe V shape. So it's as if someone's like, you know, taking the it's like pin the tail on the fish um, and this dark section comes right in which joins in with some of the pattern in the middle and all of them seem to have that although it may be a slightly different shape it's, it's present there in all of them now the first thing I'm noticing now that I've actually got a fish shape is that my fin placement is completely wrong it is too low down and it's too far back the fin seems to be a little bit closer and a little bit further up towards the eye so like here so there, there are some contours on the fish that I can see from the other angles and it's this area of the face. So I suppose this, this is the fish head area. So if I just gently put that line in there, so the fin's just slightly behind that. And that seems to be quite a common thing because I'm sure I went through the same thing with the clownfish. Uh, I wouldn't know without going back and looking because I say that was a little while ago. I think it was August or September last year. Bring this out this way a little bit. I'll just, I'll just bring the belly back. Okay, a bit happier with that. Now again, that fin could be in any position. In relation to their body size, these fins aren't that big, so it would be unlikely that we would see the one on the other side at any point from this kind of like side on view. So now we talk about their markings and having looked at all of them, they, they all seem to have a similar type of marking, although they're not identical. So the main characteristics is that there's a dark part that comes from the eye and it seems to head up round this whole part of their body, so along their back, and it joins up with this dark area at the tail that I was talking about. So all this here is dark. And they seem to have this circular part in the middle that it meets up with the fin in most cases, some of them not quite. It's more like a C shape. So from this bottom part here, there seems to be this part that comes along their body here and then kind of curves up and round. Now this is where it, this is where it gets creative because some of them have little lines that come down, you know, just behind where their head starts, like we talked about. And in some, this is completely joined up. So this is like a little circle on its own. And some of them, this black part comes really, really far forward. So you'd literally only have like a little circle there and the rest of that would be black. So we've got a bit of room for creative maneuver. And I have seen one or two that are darker under here. They are not necessarily black, but they're definitely not that bright electric blue colour that's associated with this type of fish. 
And when it comes around their eyes as well, some of them have, uh, you know, a, like a panda eye as well that <laughs> goes all the way around. But I think for the purposes of what we're doing, we maybe won't do that and we can decide on a pattern. So that, that's kind of the marking situation. So if we do this from maybe more a front on view, so like, like this one here, um, they, they aren't that pretty in shape from <laughs> from the front though. Uh, let's let's try this again. So they, they do have this very skinny shape, but they're definitely um, slightly more rounded at the bottom. And obviously at the top, they come to a point where their fin is, you know, this part here. So maybe it's more that kind of shape. And uh, see, so their their little eyes are they're not actually on the sides. They are slightly forward facing. And then they've got this um this mouth part here. <laughs> oh, a uh, fish mouth. Funny. And their fins. Looking at the front on picture, the fins seem to actually be level with the mouth. Now I've done that there purely by chance, purely by accident, but that point where the, the fins come out from seems to be level with the mouth. And may, maybe just a little bit of tail. <laughs> so in terms of markings, we may be able to see these black stripes that come down a little bit, you know, that's come from the body. Again, whether they join up or not is another matter entirely. But other than around their mouth, there's not a lot going on. It's just the main colour, you know, that of the body of the fish, which is this, say, this sort of electric blue colour, which is very, very nice. Now, I did read as well, uh, when they, as they get older, apparently they can display darker shades of blue and even into like a violet colour. And it's actually to do with stress. Um, obviously they will encounter certain things in their little fishy lives and it, if they have, a, you know, traumas or things like that can actually, or maybe illness, it makes them go a slightly more purpley shade. So I suppose one could make the assumption from the information that I've found that if you see one of these with a lot of darker blue and purple on them, that it may be an older fish. I also read as well that bred in captivity, they can live up to 20 years. That's not bad for a tiny little fish. So one of the pictures here has a really interesting view and it's like almost like a top down view. The front of the face is actually looks quite long else. And then this is, oh, this is weird. This is kind of coming up and round. So this is helping with my observation here. And this is like the start of the fin here, which just looks like a black line because it's, you know, coming from the top. And I can see more of an eye here. And because we can see slightly more of this side, I can actually see where the fins joined on. Um, and then it kind of comes out like this. So we've got a black line there and then the, the, the frilly bit, as I call it, you know, the, the, the kind of soft feathery bit. So yeah, right, I've kind of misjudged this part of the body. This is much more. And that comes up like this, where it meets the fin. And then this curves around this way. So this black part, that we talked about up here. Uh, this is kind of what's given the shape away. You know, it's letting us know that this is starting to curve round. And then all of a sudden, this is like full on party. And this part slips away in here, but we can see the part of the fish that's bent round. No idea where the fin's gone on this side either, but I can see a little bit of that bottom fin as well. Again, it's dark. Oh, that looks interesting. <laughs> Oh, that's complicated and confusing, but okay, that's it. So that's maybe slightly more advanced. You might not be wanting to go into that if you're not familiar with drawing fish or the shape of fish, but that's actually not bad. And the nice thing about it is, is although fish are very fluid and they can be in really odd positions because they're not a complicated shape to start with, this is probably one of the easier animals to draw in odd positions because you're not talking about lots of limbs and ears and nostrils and things, you know? Uh, ear, ears and noses, doesn't matter whether they're human or otherwise, they're difficult. It's not ideal, but I feel as if I've got a better grasp of the shape and how this particular fish can bend round and sometimes look skinny and sometimes look not so skinny. So I would like to try and draw a, a slightly less rough version uh, now that I've kind of grasped the basics of this. But before I do that, I want to pick out some coloured pencils because whatever we do on this side, we want to we want it in colour, don't we? So I've got a good old swatch book here. Pop this out at the moment. Uh, the pencils that I have out is just pencils I have beside me is the Faber-Castell Polychromos. They're a kind of go-to pencil for me. They're fairly reliable. So let's uh, let's look at, first of all, the blues. And maybe not the best set of pencils actually for blues and yellows, but that's okay. I would say that's a fairly good start. I would say that's fairly, 
fairly good. And then the light one from, you know, maybe some highlighted areas. We would use this very sparingly though because it is kind of heading into like almost like a turquoisey colour. Uh, but yeah, we'll go with those and maybe a, like a more purplish colour. So I think the ultramarine would be really good here because next to these blues, it does look quite purpley, but it is actually still blue. Whereas if you take this next to an actual purple, like over here, you know, into the more the violet side of things, then it definitely does look blue. I'll put that up beside there if you can see the difference between those two. So it depends what you're using the pencils with, but next to these blues, this is going to look slightly purplish. And I would use this over the top, I think, just thinking about our older, our older dories. <laughs> that might not even be purplish enough, but I think it's a good starting point. Uh, cadmium Yellow Lemon. Maybe with a bit of normal cadmium yellow mixed in. Uh, let me see. Cadmium yellow lemon. So that's the lemon. There's the cadmium yellow. So this looks quite green. Uh, but they're not actually too far away from each other. Mm, take it as it comes. <laughs> no, jury's out on that one. The jury's out. I'm always really reluctant to use a straight out black. Uh, but I think here we're... This is kind of difficult. I would probably take a the dark indigo and the black as well and use the dark indigo for the areas that any light's catching um, because it is st it still has to be really dark. Uh, and I think the light would affect that more than anything. So we'll, we'll go with those two. But obviously the indigo is going to look a little bit more natural. If you use straight black and you're, you go in really heavy with it, it does stick out like a sore thumb. So I think we'll pick two poses <clears throat> and draw them in a little bit more detail based on what we've done over here and one of them we will do in coloured pencil and just make everything lovely and pretty. Okay so let's think about the basic shape and just twist it a little bit. So we're still going to have this sort of soft triangular face and I like this, I like the, the, the paunch down here like I'm, in, I'm into that. I do tend to appreciate chubby animals though I and mean, it's maybe because I'm slightly chubby myself, I don't know. Maybe it's just because it makes them look cuter. So this is the oval section and I'm just going to leave it like that just now. So if this is turned slightly then we may not see a full eye but we might see contour there, you know, just where the the start of that eye might be. If it's not looking square on this is going to swing round a little bit. So where is the eye is very very close to the edge there, it's going to be a bit further over. So that was our line we talked about earlier as well. And we've got this bottom fin. I'm going to have to find out what these fins are called. I do kind of want to make this stand up because I want to get all this detail in. I wonder if we can have like a, like a flourish. And then roughly I just want to put in, I don't think I want to have black all around the eye because I do want to let that stand out. So maybe we'll just have a little bit of something something there. I kind of like this idea of the circle of blue in the middle though. And this, I keep looking at their tails as well and they don't seem to be... You know, that obviously they're quite soft and fluid, so I don't want a great big dark solid line here. I kind of want this to have a bit of movement in it, so I'm deliberately not going to make that a straight line. No, I think we should go for like a streamline. Maybe this one's going to be swimming upwards. So we're going to take this shape here and we're going to squash it and stretch it. So we could make this a little bit pointier. Our little fishy eye here. Where this dorsal fin starts at the top, so behind the eye. Maybe have this a lot flatter. Now there is, there always is a chance, like there's always a risk that by doing something like this, your f your fish or any subject matter isn't going to look like what it's supposed to look like. But you have to set that to the side um, and not worry about it too much. And especially with something like this, the colourings and the markings will make it obvious, even if it just looks like generic fish at this point. So it's a good idea really to not worry about those things. Okay, so let's try with a little bit of colour on this. We can, I think, I think we're going to make this our main one because I, I just like it, I like it better. So we can try our colours out down here though. So for the actual eyeball, we're going to go full on black. Just get right in there. Okay, so with this fin down the bottom here, because this is like pressed flat, this darker part's going to be like here. So I'm using the indigo here. And straight away, I, I like the idea of this indigo much better than black. I just fill this in. So I mean, I'm not taking a great amount of care over this, but I just do, I wanted to try out my colours and try out the placement and things. I actually quite like this design of not having the the dark marking all the way around. 
Okay, so let's let's try it. Let's let's start with our mid blue. I think that's probably sensible. Now, obviously, if we look at this picture again, the head curves round and into this fin. So if the light's coming down from on top, this section here is actually going to be lighter. You know, if, it, if the light source is coming top down, so we'd maybe use our lightest blue in there. So yeah, maybe he's got a little bit of a uh, little bit of light going on there. And then as the, this is curved, obviously, so we'd maybe want to use more of our, our, our darker blue here and our mid-tone blue in this case. And then underneath we could maybe maybe just go go to the, straight to the dark side. Now as for texture, they seem to be fairly smooth creatures. Um, there aren't any really obvious scales or uh, you know like ridges or anything like that apart from on the face here and around this sort of eye area here, and maybe a little bit down here. You know there's a bit of shape to this face part, but other than that, it seems to be fairly smooth. Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure how I'm feeling about these blues. I don't think they're I don't think they're doing it for me. And then we're on to the yellows. I'm feeling the light cadmium yellow. Now see that instantly when you pair up the blue and the yellow like this, you're like, oh, I kind of recognise what kind of fish that might be. And it is literally the colour that's doing that for you because it's an instant identifier. And this is what I was saying about the shape of the fish. Even though our blue isn't quite right and it's not a, a dory shaped surgeon fish or blue tang or whatever you want to call it, it still kind of looks like one because it's blue and yellow. That's made me a little bit more comfortable. I am going to change the blues out though. I'm not happy with the blues at all. So I'm going to have to pick some other colours. I'm wondering if actually the, the, the yeah, the, this, um, this uh, light ultramarine is doing it for me a little bit more. Ultramarine and cobalt blue. It may just have to be the ultramarine. I feel as if I'm kind of at a loss here. I don't want to spend ages layering pencils to make the right colour. Uh, it's not really the, the within the scope of this video. Uh, okay, we'll try we'll try the marines. Maybe take some sky blue for, for that highlight as well. Oh, my little sky blue. This is my second sky blue pencil. You can tell it's one I use a lot and it's exactly for the purpose that I've just talked about. Right, okay, we'll go with these three. That's a bit predictable for a set of pencils, but okay. I say not really the aim of the game today. Happy with the, the cadmium yellow lemon situation though, much better, much better. Let's hope that we've got a bit of light source. Uh, we'll make it we'll make it onto the face just because that's that makes things marginally more interesting. So I'm gonna start off with this sky blue and uh, I'll maybe lighten up my lines a little bit here. And so I've got this little line in. I feel as if I want a contour here, I do want to make it into like a proper face. I'm just going to stick a bit of paper under my hand as well, just because I've, uh, I've been using pencil there as well. It's just to stop me smudging it all. So I'm going to stop just under his wee chin here. And so I think the most light is going to be on this section here. So I'll take my next pencil, my mid-tone pencil, and just start working around that area. As I say, there, there doesn't seem to be much in the way of texture. Like there is a little bit, but it's not... It's not a huge amount. I'm going to give him really dark lips as well because again I th just think that would be a really nice contrast and if some of them actually have lips like that well then all the better. And we've got such a nice guideline there because we've got this dorsal fin and we've got this area, you know, dark area uh, on the stripe then that's just really helpful when you're trying to do things like this. I'm just going to build this colour up a little bit because I'm thinking as well, although this is going to be darker as it goes down, I do want to show that there's some kind of like contour here. Now we've got this little joint here where the fin joins on. I just want to make that, put that in so that we know that it's attached to the body. It is actually there. And then down under this bottom section, I see there's some that I've got a kind of darker area here and I fully want to take advantage of that because it helps show the shape. And I'm going to bring this colour all the way up to the fin and that dark mark in there. And then I've got my darkest pencil. So I feel like in here was going to be pretty, pretty dark. And I'm deliberately making really firm strokes here. And again, this is to help differentiate between the bottom of the fish and the actual fin. Now we can take advantage of this darker pencil here in this area where, you know, I said there was a little bit of um, a contour. I could push this a lot darker with a darker blue, which I may or may not do. I haven't quite decided yet. I feel like I have to put his eye in. Better already. And see on this bottom part it is a lot smoother than the top fin. So again, still don't want it like uniform lines or anything because that's just not going to look right. But So taking my ultramarine pencil, 
I'm going to kind of go over the top of what I've done and I'm actually helping to pull some of that indigo pencil along and almost muddy up on purpose and it's just because it's underneath and it's in a shadow area we do still want to be able to see that it's blue which is the colour that it should be but we still want that really nice dark part as well so I'm really tempted to chuck in a tiny little bit of indigo here just like a like a little line now on our fin again I don't think I want to go crazy with this and maybe only have a tiny bit on that side but on here we make this a bit more prominent perhaps now I did say I wanted to make the lips quite dark so I'm going to go kind of what I've done down here take this ultramarine all right now on on to on to the circle just sticking a light layer this is the mid-tone so this is the light ultramarine I'm aware that I'm rhyming off pencils here like I would in a, in a colouring tutorial. Uh, I, I can't help it. It's, I think it's kind of inbuilt now, honestly. Um, so apologies if you find that irritating. But I do like to let people know which pencils I'm using. Even if you don't have the exact pencil. So that if you've got a, a similar colour, you know, you can find it if you're wanting to do this for yourself. Or again, just even to give you ideas for colours. Now this is bringing me to a point I kind of want to, like, oh, I need to darken this down a little bit. And it's just because I want to differentiate between that contour section of the face. Because this part, we did decide that um, the black wasn't going to be all the way round. So we've got this section in here to deal with. So again, I want to show that, that teardrop shape. So we're going to be a bit darker here. And uh, we'll get it up to that lighter shade. And I'll just go back to using a little bit of my sky blue up here as well. Okay, let's go top fin here. Now this is where things get interesting. Now we want to get in that texture I was talking about. Uh, that texture, that shape I was talking about. That's kind of disappearing in behind the tail at this point as well. So we've got these lines, but they almost kind of like, there's like a slight curve in them here. Okay, I just want to darken up this dorsal fin area. I feel a sneeze coming on. Oh no. Uh, yeah, just dar dar <laughs> darken this up. Oh, there it is. Excuse me. <laughs> Do you know that way? You can feel it. You can feel it coming. Uh, yeah, so I'm doing pretty much the same with this top fin as I did with the underneath, but just not quite as dark. We'll maybe make it a little bit darker in there. So the darkest blue again, which was the ultramarine. So I'm going to fill in the gaps first. I'm beginning to think that it might actually be time to do like a deep clean of the cave because it's weird the last week or so I have been sneezing a lot in here and I don't think there's anything you know that I would be allergic to or anything I do have allergies but they're they're, they're not sneezy allergies they're mostly skin allergies I think the place has just got really dusty oh goodness me so that might be it might be a spring clean on the cards sometime soon so I'll make this little bit in here a bit dark. I don't know why that's tickled me so much, but it actually really has. It's made me laugh for some reason. There was one day, it was it was when I was doing my proper job as well, and I was I was like on the phone to, to farmers, because that's what I do as part of my job. And I, I was having to stop in between phone calls just to have really good sneezing fits, and it went on for about an hour and a half. It's quite tiring. <laughs> Okay, uh, up here I'm actually going to go over this with the sky blue now because I don't want it to be too deep in this top area because remember this is where the light's hitting and this is going to be separated off beautifully from the body by our lovely indigo strip. I was going to say black stripe there, it's techni technically it's indigo. So I'm going to put this line in here. Beautiful. Nice and defined. And then I can bring this down here. I'm not pressing very hard here and obviously that is intentional and again looking at all the pictures where the light would hit there's actually a lighter spot in the middle so I'm not really sure how I'm going to handle this just yet but I do want to get this first layer of indigo down just kind of light and even so I'll work into this harsh line that I've got around the edge there I will be working into it I'm not going to leave it like that you know just quite as stark as that and again, some do have a really defined line there that looks very similar to the top of the dorsal fin. But I just think it's going to look a bit um, a bit artificial here. Because he's quite, obviously the pencil that I'm using in the paper as well is quite soft. And I think we need to keep some of that softness. Now we've got to create our V here. So that we know where our yellow is going. 
quickly just going to switch over to the yellow pencils now. So I, after our test start down here, I am going to go with the light cadmium yellow. When we're doing fins, that's something that's very difficult. Um, I, I think I would like to spend some time learning some pencil techniques for that actual fin texture. And, you know, to get that, it's almost a transparency, but it's just not quite there. Obviously, if we layer yellow up over blue, we are going to get green. Excuse me. And again, if you do look at some of these pictures, there does seem to be a tiny, weeny, weeny, weeny hint of green in there. Good to have a really pointy point for this as well. And I am just going to flick a few lines in the way. So that's going to be very subtle, but it is there and it gives you a tiny little bit of dimension. So what that lets me do now is I can work around these sections. Now I can just work away, like work away from the fin now. Now I've gone to this scumbling motion again because I've got quite a sharp point on this. Um, I can't use the same stroke as I was using before. The one thing I am going to miss about this sketchbook is the texture of polychromos pencils particularly on it. Like they go down really well and I, I, I find it very... Uh, very aesthetically pleasing, just like the tooth of the paper here. Just again, trying to get that like a little bit of dimension in there without, you know, having to go full on photorealism. <laughs> and I've got this situation with the tail now. This is us coming to the end. We're nearly there. I say it doesn't seem to be particularly uniform. And some of them have got really wide strips on the top and maybe not on the bottom. Now I've got some, uh, some little blue grubby prints on that there. It's probably off the side of my hand, I would imagine. Uh, so I'll just clean that up quite quickly. I'm glad I changed my pencil choices. I think that was the right decision. I think I've got a much more realistic shade of blue. Now I might take a, the little bit of a warmer yellow here. And again, just in this, maybe in this bottom section here. All right, I think we'll call that done. So let's take a wee zoom out now. Oh. So there we go. In terms of a study, I would say that was fairly successful. We learned about the different placement of markings and where the fins were. We talked about the shape of the fish. We tried some wonky angles just for a giggle. And we also looked at the colour ranges of this type of fish as well and managed to narrow it down to something that was close to being well, semi-realistic anyway. So I hope this has been helpful to you, or at the very least it's inspired you. If not, if you've just enjoyed hanging out, then that is cool also. I've had a very enjoyable time today, as I usually do. If I didn't, I probably wouldn't make these videos, but I really appreciate you coming to hang out with me. If you want to go and check out the stash shop, it may not be today, but I'm filming this in advance, but up in the stash shop, there is the option for prints of the powder paintings that we did. I was really surprised that you guys enjoyed those and quite a few of you asked about prints. So they are there, they are available in print format. If you would like to own one of those, you can check out the stash shop over on the website. This is the address here. And there's other goodies on there too. Other things that I've got on just now that are quite interesting is the Derwent water brushes. And they're the ones with the, the push buttons on them. I had a very, in fact, I actually reviewed them in a, in, I think it, I would want to say an upgrade. It might not have been an upgrade. I did review one at some point and I was very uh, very taken with them so there are packs of those there are multi packs of different nibs on them uh, so if you're into water brushes and you're looking for something else to try then I have packs of those on the website today too also up and coming in the stash shop uh, very very soon will be our Mildred stickers and yes there is going to be an other sticker so you can check back in the next week or so for Mildred stickers also if that's something that you are keen on owning anyway guys that's it for today thank you very much once again for watching I will see you back in the cave on Thursday for another video. So have a great day everyone and bye-bye for now.